This concerns Denver Police Case Number 2002-18178, the cold case homicide that happened on April 20th of 2002, and the victim being a Rodney Tate. Rodney was shot several times. He was pronounced deceased on scene. Rodney was a big guy. He was tall, like he had his daddy's height. He was 6'3", uh, 265 pounds, and I always called him my teddy bear. You know how you have your sibling rivalries. We fought, we, we fight, and he'd follow me. Like, stop following me. We just got into a fight, but you know, we still had fun. Little Rodney was, he was very, he was very generous. He wasn't no fighter or nothing. He was a, you know, a very giving guy, you know. He was just growing up. Just, just growing, growing up, up that's all. Just growing up, just growing up in the neighborhood. On April 20th, 2002, just prior to 6.20 at night, Rodney Tate was a passenger in a Chevy Blazer driving eastbound here on MLK. At approximately Niagara, the suspect vehicle pulls up alongside the victim's car and begins firing shots into the victim's car. The shooting continues as the victim's car is going eastbound. The victim's car takes a, a left turn in between this tree and the evergreen, cutting northbound. It's gonna cut across MLK to the second house here on the left. This is where the first 911 call comes in of the shooting and where responding officers and paramedics find the victim deceased in the car and the other victim of the shooting. He had just left my house on that particular day. I was like, hey, see you, see you later, nephew, you know, and you're just another typical, you know, uh, goodbyes, you know. At 5.30, I got a call, and uh, she told me Rodney's been shot. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, it, it can't be. He, he just pulled out my alley. I don't even think I put shoes on. We were out of there so fast. When I got there and I, I saw the yellow tape, I knew when I saw the yellow tape, someone's life had been taken. And I was hoping that it wasn't Rodney's life. And um, as it continued on throughout the night, come to find out that it was Rodney, life that had gotten taken. That was, that was, he was still sitting in the truck. When I got there, when I went to go up to the truck, they wouldn't let me go up to the truck, so. So that was the day his life was taken. Further investigation led detectives to understand that there was a altercation approximately 15 minutes to 30 minutes prior to the shooting at 34th and Colorado. Uh, two groups, the victim's vehicle and the suspect's vehicle, were involved in an altercation at the McDonald's. There was a uh, verbal altercation, there was no uh, description of any weapons displayed or a physical altercation of any sort. You hear it, one minute next time you're gone. So I would say to anyone that knows anything about Rodney Tate's murder to please come forward, say something, because you never know when it could happen to your family. You know, nothing's gonna bring him back, but you know, somebody needs to pay for it. There are people out there on this case and Rodney Tate's murder, who have seen, who have heard things that have not come forward. I plead with the communities that are affected by this violence, if you have information, please come forward. Please call Crime Stoppers. I don't ever want to forget, not ever, as long as I live.